Okay, so good morning, everybody, and welcome to the open house. My name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of tradeoutloud.com. And today is a fabulous day. It is Tuesday. It is August 9th, 2022. It is 9.05 a.m. Eastern. And let's get started. Welcome to the Open House Live Futures Trading Room. We're going to have three days. Your guys are going to spend three days with me. For those of you that are new and do not know me, my name is Anka Metcalf and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com, which is a trading education firm that is specialized in educating individuals how to day trade, swing trade, actively invest and invest in the markets, equities, futures, forex, whatever market. If there's a tick that is moving, we're trading it. I have been doing this professionally for over 10 years, for over 20 years. Prior to becoming a professional independent trader, I come with 10 years in investment banking. I also run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs. So you may hear me throughout the day today, tomorrow, and on Thursday, mention some stocks because I also have a plethora of stocks that I'm watching and I am a really active swing trader. I've been doing this since 2010. 2010 is the year when Trade Out Loud was born. Also run the Futures Trading Room since 2017. We have over 300 members in the room and counting. I have uh, managed day trading and swing trading accounts for my clients. We offer education for swing trading, day trading stocks and futures, and I specialize in high velocity trades. So that means that when I stock for a trade, I look at the best risk reward ratio and I look for that strong momentum to kick in so we can have the most profit. So what that means that you're going to have one trade and done or two trades and done, maximum three trades and done, depending on the market environment. Typically, if we have one good trade in the morning that delivers a really good result, we may not, we're going to shut the room down and tomorrow's another day. That's how we compound our profits. The most important thing is that we, uh, and one of the reasons why we don't take a plethora of trades is because the futures market still has commissions. And uh, the reason for that is that we specialize into these high velocity moves. So we specialize in moves that generate, for example, in S&P, five points, 10 points, 20 points, 30 points, uh, depending on the market environment. So we take one trade instead of taking a plethora of trades. So if you're here just to take a couple of ticks and run, this is not a room for you. If you are used to taking 20 trades a day or seven trades in a day, this room is not for you because we're super focused. We want to juice up the maximum odds from a specific trade and not take a plethora of trades where we take two ticks here, one point there, another three ticks there, and so on and so forth. So we focus on our method that delivers the maximum results. You can see the portfolio performance that is transparent on our website. If you go to the services page, you can see it for futures and also for uh, the swing trading system that we have, the program. I'm also the designer of an institutional proprietary trading system that is based on price port resistance, eight plus. So that means eight layers of price port resistance. We look at specific trigger ties, specific price zones, and chart synchronicity. Throughout the trading session today, th Thursday, you're going to hear me mention certain times into the market, like 9.32, 9.35, 9.45, 10 o'clock, 10.30, etc. And they have a separate meaning and a separate reaction into the market that I'm looking at. So uh, pay very close attention because we are about to share with you uh, exactly what we teach in our Power Income Futures uh, Day Trading course. Uh, if the moment is right, we are going to talk about some swing trades as well. This is a day trading and also a swing trading uh, room. So if there are swing trading opportunities, we are going to mention them. We also, I have also posted one already in the performance portfolio for our members that we're going to talk about in the analysis. We talked about a trade in oil yesterday for a short squeeze opportunity with Target that's already at Target 1, and we already called a gold swing trade. I also mentioned it on the public feed, on uh, Trade Out Loud on Twitter, and uh, this trade has already triggered because it has a high of 18.14, so gold already in play. All right, I have been featured in tons of magazines and uh 
Um, I have been interviewed um, by financial media outlets. Uh, before we get started, uh, you already had a pop-up window when you joined the room. Um, please remember that all information provided by us is for educational purpose only. It should not be construed as investment advice regarding the purchase or sale of securities, options, futures, forex, or any instrument of any kind. For those of you that are new to Trade Out Loud, you can find out more information about uh, us on tradeoutloud.com on our website and also on these following social media sites on YouTube, um, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. And if you have any specific question about one of our services or any technical question that you may have, you can address it at info at tradeoutloud.com. Either myself or my team will get back to you as soon as we can. Here are some rules to the game, okay? Rules to the game. So uh, no questions in the first hour. Focus is trading, okay? So no questions in the first hour. Focus is trading. We will allocate time at the end of the trading session for Q&A. Let me remind you, this is not a webinar. This is live trading the market. Small size accounts can also participate in any trade setup using micros. Please position size for that. Uh, if, uh, he, uh, if you're here for the very first time, watch the dynamics. So you get very accustomed if you decide to become a member to know what you, you can expect. Position sizing is key. We recommend traders to use one or two percent of their account size per risk per trade. So that means that you're going to be risking, let's say, one percent. Race trade, and if you have, if we have three trades that we call, uh, let's say today, then you will be using for percent of your account. The way I exit, because I use multiple contracts, I exit half at target one, I exit a quarter at target two, and the rest I trail further. I don't take myself out at target three. Okay. I let the market take me out. Therefore, I trail. I have a trailing system that is based on price action, not percentages. It's based on momentum and price action. If you're trading with only one contract, whether full or micro, it really doesn't matter. Traders will look to trail since no partial exits are possible. I always mention target one and two are the options. Let me remind you that target one in a momentum trade, especially in day trading, is the easiest target to achieve. So if you have a small account or if you are just trading with only one contract, you may consider taking target one. Or if you achieve target one, if you do not want to take it out, you can lift your stop to break even and let it go. This way you have a risk-free trade, which is a mega super bonus from the trading odds. Sample of the trade uh, that we call, for example, if we have a trade in the mini s &P, Let's say, let's say we have a trade in ES and I call it long and I say, and I say 31 by 20. That means 4431 by 4420. The first, uh, the first thing that you're going to see is going to be the symbol, then the direction of the trade where the longer short. This is the entry by the stop. And if it's a short, you're going to have the short and you're going to have the entry for the short and the stop or the short. The targets are going to be. Uh, like so mentioned with precision, you can see it right here with the uh, precision to the point. And uh, for example, and there, uh, all these trades are going to be called live on the mic and also will be typed in the trading room. Okay. Um, also, all trades will be uh, called live on the mic. The other thing that I provide is trailing into targets. Nobody does this. OK, trailing into target, you're not going to be on your own. I'm going to give you trailing suggestions or you can follow them or you may not, whatever you choose to do. It is the way I trade my account. Please be on time. If you're late, we will not answer questions to already discussed matters. What do I expect? We will begin shortly with the pre-market game plan and the major indices in gold and oil. We're going to be analyzing the current market contest. We're going to go over the news and analyze the impact on price action. We're going to go a little bit over major economic reports from the prior day and the current day open. And we're going to identify trading opportunities. We already have the market already plotted out. So when you join in the room every day, you're going to have some technical levels that you can act on. 
Uh, we're going to be waiting for a trade. So there's going to be some quiet time. And that is the time where we stop for the trades. We look at every tick, every single momentum. So because we only trade two hours a day, I highly recommend you guys, if you want to take a bathroom break, if you want to take, you know, get a glass of water or a cup of coffee, you may do so now before the market opens, because from the time when the market opens, game's on. So you got to be all in. Uh, we're going to determine the execution strategy parameters for every trade. We're going to do live trading. And at the end of the session, we're going to do a recap of the session. We focus on momentum, continuation patterns, trend trading, counter trend trading, uh, day trading, and swing trading. So pretty thing, everything under the sun. So how the trades will be uh, called one more time. All trades will be called out loud on the microphone. All trades will be posted in the trading room with caps. Um, if it is a momentum trade, these happen once in a blue moon, um, maybe a couple of times a year, but if today or within these three days, that's going to be the case. So if there were going to have a momentum trade, there will be no time to post in the trading room. However, I will be mentioned again on, time, on the microphone at least three times. So, uh, make sure that you pay attention. Please close, close all your open browsers. This is serious business and this is live trading. We only use limit orders since we know exactly where our entry is and our stop ahead of time, as well as target. Sample of the call trades we just mentioned. So it's going to be the symbol, the direction, the first number that is going to be displayed is going to be the entry. X is going to be by the stop that is going to be used and the targets are going to be printed as well and called on the mic. Let's get started, everybody. So uh, earnings uh, today is a beautiful day. Like I said, today is Tuesday and we had some earnings reports come out. Last night, we did have some earnings reports come out. I think one of the most important things is going to be today after the uh, after the close with Coinbase. I think that's going to be a big player. Uh, but we had Spirit this morning. We have Hilton. So not a lot of players that are going to influence the market. Uh, let me remind you that we're into the we have entered already the little bit slower part of earnings. Major economic releases for today uh, at 6 a.m. We had the NFIB small business index at 8:30. Uh, we had the preliminary non-farm productivity. Uh, we also have the preliminary unit labor cost, and we have the IBDT IPP economic optimism. This is kind of usually coming around 10 a.m. All right, so uh, with that being said, everybody, I am going to shift the screen towards our analysis screen. All right, so make sure that you guys can see this. Let me know, just give me a heads up if you guys can see the screen. Highly appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so uh, this is the Dow and we're gonna go and take a look at the Dow. We are about 10 minutes into the open and this is usually the time that I come onto the mic uh, every single day because from 9 a.m. Uh, into 9.20, I verify the market, verify everything that's going on on a macro level, stock level, fundamental level. I'm looking for news, rumors, etc. So I'm doing a lot of research before the market opens. Uh, also, um, we're going to do an analysis. And by the way, if you guys see the price that is not moving on my upper charts, uh, I do not watch pre-market data on this particular screen. You're going to have pre-market data when we're going to be sharing the watch screen where we stock for trades in a few moments. Higher time frames, of obviously, they uh, do include pre-market data because we need to have that information. So where we stand on a macro level, on the monthly chart, we uh we're uh we're trying to rotate so we're doing an inside and this is an inside and out weekly formation uh where we have support exactly at the 23.6 percent and this is an extension from the pandemic low to the pandemic high and it's very important because uh and you may think okay why is she looking on the monthly when we're day trading and we're trying to look for a trade off the one minute because it's very important because if it's reaching an area of resistance on the monthly that's going to have a really heavy impact on smaller time frames so as you can see we're hitting right now we have a lid right here with the 10 ema so we knocked on this 10 ema and we're producing a little bit a little bit of gyration 
Moving to the weekly chart, we have triggered a little bit higher into a continuation pattern. We still have a strong level of resistance from the left-hand side, from the peak uh, from, an, uh, from May. And we also have the bottoms that were from February and March that are creating a lot of resistance for the price at this point. We do have room for a continuation higher, at least into the 33,500. So this is encouraging for price action. Now for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, uh, we have been sideways. Sideways means neutral bias. We're not getting the velocity for higher or for lower. So this is going to be a problem until we break above or we break below. As long as we stay above the ultra power trend, which is above the 10 EMA, we're going to look for bullish bias. So we're going to be neutral towards moderate bullish. So as long as we're going to hold the support into the 32,500 and also into the 32,300, we're still going to be looking for bullish bias as investors and traders and including algos will be looking for buying opportunities off of those low levels. Also, a thing to note is that we're already trading into this cluster high. We've had a similar price action, the similar price action that we're having today. As you can see, we're, we're still trading above the 10 EMA, uh, and that was end of March, all the way to the pullback that happened uh, June, uh, that happened June 9th, June 10th, actually, June 9th and 10th. And that was because of the contract roll, and we had some other divergency as well, and that we broke below. So we're trading into the same congestion area. That's why the price is not advancing. And that's why the price is not um, um, declining. At this point, we have a moderate bullish above level that you guys are going to see a little bit of better uh, when I will share a different, a different chart. So we have a bullish above level today, confirmation, confirmed moderate bullish above level uh, 32,870. If the price action throughout the trading day today is going to get into this level, then we will look for a continuation higher. We also have another key level that suggests velocity, more velocity, and this is going to be the snap up level. So shorting is not going to be an option if the price is going to reach this level. As you guys can see, I'm going to zoom in a little bit on the technical chart. You can see that the motion is upward, so we're still into an uptrend. This is the peak that we had in yesterday's trading session. We had a very dynamic overnight trading session last night. Not last night, but the night before. Tonight, last night, we actually had very sideways price action where we revisited the lows from yesterday. So uh, it's obvious that we're into uh, massive support. This is major support. And if the price is going to snap above this congestion area, we're going to snap back up. The trend is still up. So we are trading into an uptrend onto the daily. We have not switched the trend onto the monthly. That's why we're getting so much uh, gyration in price and indecision in price because we have one time frame, the daily, which is an uptrend. In an uptrend, we have the weekly chart, which is still downtrending. And we have the monthly chart that is uptrending. And we have a neutral hourly chart. All right, let's continue with the mini SMP. The mini SMP is pretty much into the same stage as the uh, Dow. The mini SMP is knocking into resistance, twenty-three point six percent retracement from pandemic low to uh, this year's high. The weekly chart is still uh, trading within last uh, week's parameters, the highs and the low. We still have a little bit of room to forty-two hundred. 4,200 is resistance. If we snap above resistance into the 4,200, we're going to have about 100 to 120 points velocity to the upside. So that means that shorting is not going to be an option and we're going to be focusing on longs only. When we look at the hourly chart, we're seeing that we have a rising 200 SMA into the 4,120. That is also support. This is a whole band of support right here. We're seeing that the price action is trying to rotate on the hourly ever so slightly. We do have a lot of divergence because the price is trading under DMA, so it's getting that bearish connotation. However, the price is going to fight back, and if it's going to try getting above the 4140 to 4150, 4150, 4155 is going to be a dynamic bullish above level. Right now, the price action is neutral, and the uh, and the action is neutral at this point. Let's talk about Nasdaq, which was a little bit stronger. Uh, throughout these last weeks, again, we are we have tapped into yesterday's trading session into the 10 EMA that shows a slowdown into the momentum and price action needs to digest above 400 450 in order to navigate higher. 
the next target for NASDAQ is going to be 14,000. You can see it right here. We also have a flat 89 SMA. Well, the price action is trading within last week's parameters, the highs and the lows. That shows the lack of velocity to the upside and to the downside. If the price should start trading over 384.5, we will have velocity to 14,000. And that's going to literally punch it higher. Today, a little bit of rotation that happened uh, below yesterday's low, a little bit weaker compared to uh, the MNE S&P and the Dow at this point. However, relatively straight when we look at the structure and the overall structure. We do have an area of maximum confluence at 13,000. So pullbacks into the 13,000 may be possible today. So that, do that doesn't mean that we're going to be overly bearish, but this could be a scalp to the downside. So keep that in mind. Also, last index that we're going to tackle is going to be uh, RTY, right? RTY had relative strength in yesterday's trading session. In fact, you could see that it had a lot of velocity on the weekly chart continuing higher and blasting off the resistance that we had to left hand side on, uh, on June 6th. You can see that as, uh, as all the indices that we talked about till now, we also tapped into the 10 EMA. That means resistance at this point. So uh, the game plan for moving forward, we still have an area of minor support that is that lies into the 1920. If the price action is going to pull back to 1920, this may be a buy opportunity. However, if the price is going to pull back into the 1900, this may be another buy opportunity. Until then, the price action is neutral. It's trading within yesterday's parameters and doesn't have any velocity. The bullish above level for RTY is going to be the 1950. If the price is going to get over 1950, shorting is not going to be an option. And we're going to look for a bullish bias. Continuation into the 1951. And also, we're going to be looking for 19, 1960. And even further, we have room to run into 2000 and 2010. These are the overall targets for the week or for the month if the price is going to snap above that bullish above level. Now we're going to talk about oil. Oil is a trade that I talked with my members in yesterday's trading session. And I did mention, as you guys can see here, uh, we had a short squeeze that happened at $91. We had the levels on the chart. We also had an alert that did not trigger in yesterday's trading session, but guess what trade triggered later on. So if you're into swing trading, this trade would have been for you with the target level that the first target level was into the $92 and we had a final uh, target level almost into $93. At this point, this is the um, this is the short squeeze level. And as you can see, if the price is going to get back into $91, we may assess it for another trade opportunity, whether day trade or swing trade. Uh, last, uh, not last. Okay. Uh, but we have GC, which is gold. Okay. Gold, we had a trade from yesterday's trading session. Uh, you could see the parameters that are already set here. These were yesterday on the charts and we have the bullish above level at 1820. Now we have a chance to see it in play. Uh, 1820 is the buy uh, and we have a bearish below level. So this means that this is a risk level that if the price is going to uh, start dropping, this is going to be the short. So if uh, let's say it's going to run into target and for example, maybe it's not going to run into target, but if it's going to turn around the 1770, you're going to possibly exit the trade if you're already uh, on the long side, and this can signal a short possibility. But we're in long, so we're going to focus on the long side. We already have targets all the way into the 20 to 25, 30 to 35, and we have the 40 and the 50. If the price is going to start uh, punching over 50, then we have a lot of room to progress higher, at least into the 60s and 70s. No trades at this point. Uh, if you're not in the trade, look for a pullback if that should be into the 1812 and your risk per trade is going to be 1770 position size for that. Or you can use micros that is MGC to position size better if you have a smaller trading account size. Natural gas is a trade that is trying to set up. I posted already in the performance portfolio with the parameters. So the trade, if it should trade today over uh, seven dollars, uh, over seven dollars and ninety-two cents. This is a call, seven dollars and ninety-two cents, and the risk is going to be seven dollars and fifty-two cents. Then we may have progression higher in about eight. Obviously, one of the first targets is going to be eight dollars because of the core range, and then we're going to look for targets into eight twenty-two, eight thirty, at least to start off, and into the eight fifty. 
All right, everybody, the market is open. I'm going to shift right now the screen to our uh, to our watch screen. As you guys can see, we're watching five minute charts uh, due to the volatility. Five minutes, a little bit safer day trading time frame. And just a quick look at uh, to see if we have synchronicity and divergency throughout. We're having a little bit of relative strength in the Dow. Dow on the positive note, we have almost flat in mini SMP for four, four points down. We have NASDAQ 76 points down, a little bit weaker for the trading session. In fact, we did talk in the market game plan about that daily rotation that punched in yesterday's support level and trading a little bit below the support level. And we have R2I divergent to the downside. All right, so uh, the focal area that we're going to be watching is going to be into the 935. 935 is going to be uh, a timing where we're going to have, you know, some proof for the first five minutes. I specialize in trading the open. This is my preferred time to trade. I have strategies designed for this specific time. At this moment, we don't have any other uh, any indices that we're watching. And for day trades, we're only focusing on indices, all the indices. So we're going to select the best runners. Just because the price is, mo is moving on one side or the other side, we're not jumping in. Jumping in is not a strategy. Price is getting rejected in YM by the 10 EMA. We're already trading inside yesterday's parameters. So we're still holding a yesterday's support uh, in the Dow. So Dow still has a little bit of better structure at this moment. Let's take a closer look at the m and SMP. So as I am talking, I'm watching the overall market on all time frames. The m and S&P just like NASDAQ has punched in below yesterday's lows and it is trading a little bit lower. It's still hovering into the core of the range from the last eight trading sessions. That core of the range and some support level uh, is about 30 points below into the 4,100. Two minutes are up and we're having a brand new candle, for example, on two minute time frame that is suggesting a little bit of continuation to the downside. We have uh, intraday support at 41.23 at this moment in S&P. NASDAQ a little bit weaker uh, than um, YM and ES, as you can see it right here as well. 13,000 and NASDAQ is support. Uh, let me remind you that NASDAQ is approaching the one hour rising 200 simple moving average. And let's see we if we have any sort of reaction off of that level. It's around the 40, the 1340 level, 13,040 level in NASDAQ. And remember, we may or we may not have a trade today. It's all based on the market environment. We are back into a support level in RTY. As you guys can see, uh, we are back into a high velocity area. So we may see some kind of reaction into this uh, area. This is going to be very interesting. We may see a pop up. Here we go. See how this level reacted. Take a look how core support band reacted. And we're we just erased the cray cray z mess uh, from the last three minutes. I'm gonna take uh oil back to a five minute. I'm not gonna take gold to a five minute. I have no interest in day trading gold, but I do have an interest in seeing my swing trade achieve targets.
Here is the trait that we uh, talked about earlier. I didn't have a chance to post it in here. It never triggered. The price is trading at $7.81 and the entry long is $7.92. Uh, the stop is $7.52 and the target is $8, $8.20, $0.30, cents, $0.40, and the rest to be decided by trailing. And let me remind you, this is a swing trade. So the duration of the trade can be from two days to two weeks or more, depending on the market environment. The divergence is a nauseating. Uh, that is so right. Doji Man is just crazy. Uh, this is part of price discovery within the last, within the first five minutes, five minutes are in. Uh, there can potentially be a trade of for natural gas as part of a gap bill. If it trades over $7, uh, $7.87 with a stop of $7.76. Just FYI, if you're interested uh, to the day trading side, I just seen it and I just wanted to mention that. I don't have a favorite index at this time. I'm not sure there is an MNG. That's why you're not seeing it. It doesn't exist. Uh, but there is a QG and that's half the size. So there is no micro, but it's QG, which is uh, mini. It's not, it's not a micro, so it's half the size. So that is QG. Okay, don't forget guys, uh, don't forget to uh, tap into where you're typing it, where, where you're typing, make sure you select everyone, not just hosts and panelists. Mm, yeah, no. All right, we're seeing NASDAQ that is creating a lot more weakness. The Dow is starting to, it wants to hold a little bit. Uh, bonds, 30 year, 10 year sideways. We have metals that are a little bit stronger. Gold is uh, a lot stronger than silver. Silver had a um, little bit more strength than yesterday's trading session. So right now gold is trying to catch up. Copper is a little bit stronger. Platinum stronger as well. We have the dollar sideways, euro sideways. Agricultural products, um, are curling up a little bit. So we have soybeans that it wants to break out over 1430, not taking the trade in that. These are just some comments. Uh, corn a little bit higher today, rotated with a little gap up. Uh, we have uh, oats into resistance into the 20 SMA. We have wheat relatively sideways and trading into resistance at 785 into the 20 SMA. Soybean oil, relatively sideways, uh, also caught into a lot of resistance from the core within the past uh, within the past two months, almost two months, I would say six weeks. Hogs, from the gap down from the roll, sideways, but trading into the uh, 200 SMA. Live cattle, sideways, 143, support. going to take a look at the stock market in a second. I'm going to bring some commentary from the stock market. Um, NVIDIA continues to be a little bit weaker following yesterday's tape bomb. We have Apple sideways. We have Microsoft that wants to come in, trying to rotate, trying to break the base below 279. Amazon in a weekly rotation for Dow reacting off of the 200 SMA on the daily. Tesla rotating down also 200 SMA just above 900, punching down, Google sideways into the top of the range, but coming in. So NASDAQ stocks are a little bit more under pressure. Let's take a quick look. I know you guys are not seeing this. I'm not sharing it right now because we're focused on trades and futures, not stocks. 
uh, within the Dow, UNH, big power player in the Dow. That's why I keep, let's keep an eye on Dow. Dow is a little bit stronger because it has some power players in. UNH almost blasting over the top of the range. Goldman Sachs trading within yesterday's parameters may punch in higher. We have a little bit of weakness in Home Depot and Microsoft. McDonald's is sideways. We have JP Morgan holding yesterday's range. Interesting, JP Morgan, if it trades over 117, that's going to be a buy. Caterpillar holding pretty tight. Honeywell punching into the 200 SMA into the vicinity of the 200 SMA on the daily, trading inside day today. Bank of America sideways continues to trade just below $34. Boeing sideways. If Boeing is, should trade over 170, should start going up again. These are just some comments from what I'm seeing into my charts right now. All right, we're seeing the mini SMP. Like I said, I'm seeing a little bit of uh, momentum in the Dow stocks. Time to shift my attention to the Dowski. Large volatility bar, really large. We're going to be closing the 15 minute bar in about three minutes. And we have a huge open range. Low, 734. High, 845. What else is new? And basically this bar, what this bar did, it revisited yesterday's lows from 3 p.m. and also from 12.30 and punched into the highs from yesterday yesterday afternoon. So it's going to try to, you know, kind of balance out all the way into the 8.50 to 8.60. No patterns that... uh my strategies uh, will react on right now. So nothing to see here. In mini SMP, I know many of you guys may only trade the mini SMP. In mini SMP is a little weaker. Um, it has tested yesterday's lows and right now the price action is still hovering into those lows. It is forming a range uh, from 4180, uh, from 4138 all the way to the low of today's session of 25, 4125. Uh, it came in, so this morning when it opened, it shot up a little bit. As you guys can see, this little tail right here. So it shot up and it actually came into yesterday's New York trading session lows. And right now, it's just gravitating below those lows right now. Those lows represent resistance for current price action. There's no decision in price. Now, if you're trading, day trading, of course, this latter part of earnings season, things are going to really slow down starting with next week. And uh, if you're trading this part, remember that um, you are not going to have a massive catalyst uh, in the market uh, on the fundamental side, but you are going to be subject to... Um, more of news announcements and news is more gonna, going to be in play. That is going to produce more gyration in price, more price discovery off the open. So you have to have a lot more patience for that. There are still going to be plenty of trading opportunities. Take advantage of August because September is going to be rough, okay? And uh, especially in the second week, third week, and the last week of September, these are going to be very difficult months to trade. You have to 
know what you're doing and deploy, deploy really good precise position sizing and management because they're a little bit more difficult to the context in which we're trading right now. All right, so, so far we're keeping the range in S&P. We are a little bit weaker in NASDAQ. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, if NASDAQ should ever get into 113 to 115, uh, it's going to catch a bit and it's going to go a little bit higher. But as of right now, it's not doing anything. It still has support into the 13037. And like I said, the 1H chart here uh -uh, is telling us a story. Remember what I said when I was doing the pre-market game plan and I said we have a rising 200 simple moving average on the one hour chart and we're going to see some reaction. Here it is. You saw some reactions, so it's a, whether it's a temporary stall or a stall for the trading session today, we don't know. It's, it's definitely a stall into that point. So there was this doji here on the five minute, but it really didn't achieve much. It went into 10 EMA, 20 SMA, didn't really went uh, further beyond that point. So this shows us that this is algo trading 101. So bigger traders, bigger sharks are not trading this market right now. NASDAQ, let me remind you, it has, has a little bit of relative strength, but has a little bit of room to run. <clears throat> Current support is 50. So keep in mind, if we should be calling a long trade in NASDAQ, uh, the stop is going to be 50. There is the potential for a little bit of a run up over 100. It has room from 100 to 110 if it is snaps over 113. It can run to 120 and 134. Time will tell. Very choppy market. That's right, Riaz. Today's market is chop chop. Some of the best performing stocks today, uh, Oxy, already up uh, 3.8%. Marathon oil, so oil stocks. Marathon oil is up two point, almost 2.5% as of this point. CLR. CLR up 1.8%. So oil stocks are performing pretty good. Um, CHK. Chesapeake is up 2.68%. Oh, this is sweet. Uh, 
going to put it right here since we're not doing anything at this point. This has a fabulous, fabulous breakout formation right here into the uh, 9580. 9580 can run into 100 and into this peak of 103 to 105. That's right, John. Some really nice performers. HES as well. Let me just put it in here because um, let's put it on the daily. Okay, HES up also on the day today. Let's see, what else do I have? These are popping from my scanner. Okay, um, COP. Here's COP as well. And remember, if we have happy oil, but we don't have happy financials, if we have happy oil and happy financials, then S&P may start going higher, but we don't have happy financials. Financials are very sideways right now. Uh, Shell as well. Higher, you can see it with a little gap up right here. APA, almost 3% up. NWS, I don't know why the charts are taking so long to uh, gener generate here on the Thinkorswim platform. I find it a little slow this morning. Uh, over 6% up, crazy. All right, back to oil, back to watching pay drive. <laughs> Okay, some days are very fast. For example, yesterday we had really high momentum. And today we're having this chop fest. Absolutely, Lewis. Yes. <laughs> All right. We're getting a little bit hit right here with some red. We're revisiting prior support zones. Prior support zones are visited right now. always when we see these this kind of activity and if we are going to become bearish we want to go with the relative weak index which at this point it's nasdaq let's see if we have a short like i said shorts or longs are on the table as long as the price action is sideways we have topped below the last 15 minute activity. In fact, we have about six minutes into the top of the hour. Remember that the top of the hour, if we have like a big drop right now or this little tape bump that we're having to the downside, uh, remember that at 10 o'clock, we may see a reversal that may, the, may take the price lower. Oh, so I'm sorry, higher <laughs> reversal. I just said reversal. <laughs> okay, so yeah. We should snap to the upside. We have the IBDT, IPP economic optimism. This is usually coming out at 10 o'clock. It's still tentative, tentative on our calendars. Remember that tomorrow we're going to have a little bit more price action because we have the CPI and the core CPI. These are very important numbers that are going to come tomorrow. And these are going to shape the market for the whole day tomorrow and possibly for the rest of the week. We also have Thursday unemployment claims and the PPI that are coming in at 8.30. And uh, that is before the market opens. So that's gonna probably give us some really nice um, activity.
We have four minutes into the top of the hour. We're approaching reversal time, noticing that the Dow, which has a little bit more uh, strength to it, is reacting. So far, a complete boring day. Okay, notice that NASDAQ is ready to support at 13,000, the support area that we have discussed in the pre-market game plan. We're also trading into support very close to 1920 into RTY, noticing that the first rotation is coming in YM right now. We are seconds away from the top of the hour, which usually brings reversal and we ha may have a short squeeze opportunity. So stay tuned. This is going to be super fast if it's going to set up. Okay, guys, NASDAQ long. Thirteen zero ten. Do not get it ahead of the trigger. The stop is going to be twelve nine nine zero. The target is going to be thirteen zero twenty. And thirteen zero twenty five. Just wait for it. It just did a punch lot, just a little bit below that ninety. Just wait for it. Sometimes they do that. Cancel trade. I repeat, cancel trade. In about four minutes, less than four minutes, we have four bars on the five minute down, which makes NASDAQ a lot of a better candidate for a reversal if we should get that.
Right now, NASDAQ is trading into a high velocity zone that is coming from a macro level. So that is support into the 77, as you guys can see it right here on the chart. It dug in a little bit steeper here. Uh, we're still looking for that rotational pattern to happen. It seems that 13010 may still be the entry, but it dug a little deeper into support. So the stop may be the 12980. We have about two minutes into the close of the five minute candle. If we keep it up, we may have a doji. Hey, Joe. Uh, Russell getting a little bit weaker. Uh, Russell is divergent. Russell divergent. Russell Divergent. NASDAQ maintaining the parameters, so we may reinstate NASDAQ trade long, but not at this moment. And the strategy is going to be a short squeeze that is going to carry the price, like I said, into the 2025. <laughs> Joe, don't forget to enable um, everyone because you're just typing it to myself, host and panelist. You just have host and panelist. <laughs> Okay. Not in the trade yet. Not in. I did not call. Okay. Here it is, guys. NASDAQ is going to be a longie. NASDAQ is going to be a long. The entry is going to be this time 11. I'm not going to post a whole number, but it's going to be 11. 13, 0, 11. And the stop is going to be. 80. So it's 11 by 80. 13, 0, 11 by 12, 9, 80. Did not take it ahead of the trigger. These are the targets still, 2025. Wait for it to trigger first. Don't get in. We may cancel it though, if the trade is not triggering. We don't have a short setup. Come on, baby, let's do this.
Limit order 13, 0, 11. Stop 12, 9, 80. Here's the setup. Ultimately, we want to run it and see if we can run it into 30. Oil is a trade as well. So see along. This is a day trade. It's going to be a base breakout. 91.50. We're going to use a stop. 91.45. We're going to look for a first target into 92.40. Second target is going to be into 0.50. Third target is going to be 0.60. And the rest by trailing. Oops, the entry, I got it wrong. Sorry about that typo. So see how I'm going to retype it again. See a long. Ninety two oh five. Sorry about that. Stop. I'm going to repost it again. I can't delete what I just uh, posted, but um, the stop is still going to be the same. Ninety one. 45, same targets. So long, 92.05, it's actually going to be above this range, above this range, above 92.05. Okay, 92.05. And we're going to be looking for a continuation higher to complete this cone into these highs. We're also having a 15 minute inside bar in oil. Um, I'm cheating on the uh, stop a little bit because the ultimate stop should be 9120, under 9120. So we selected 9145. Okay, cancel NASDAQ. Cancel NASDAQ. The only trade that is on right now is oil. Greasy oil. I like that, Jim. Um, NASDAQ is playing games. NASDAQ reinstating the trade in NASDAQ. NASDAQ reinstating the trade. The entry is going to be 07, not 11, 07. Same targets. All right. 
All right, as I was typing, our order got filled in oil. Target one, 90 to 40. Target one in oil, 90 to 40. Then we go 50, 60. The rest by trailing. All right. Now NASDAQ. Let's check on NASI. NASDAQ made it to 13,000. It's a little bit under pressure on the two minute because it has a declining 10 EMA. So it needs to grab on to that 10 EMA, lift its body and start trading towards the 10. Here's the two minute. The more it stays here, the more it stayed here, the more the 10 EMA caught up in price, caught up with price. Hey, Target, that just may be. Let's go to the five. Very slow price action in oil, slow price action, sloppy price action throughout the board. In fact, this is a great example of how to trade this choppy market. <laughs> okay. Just have a little bit more patience, keep it stress free, just, you know, look at best possible parameters for the trades and see what's uh what's what are the where are the better odds and where's the money shifting we are two ticks away order filled in nasdaq worth we are both committed into nasdaq and oil Small accounts, or if you're trading with only one contract, 90 to 40 looks like a good area to kill the trade. It is an asymmetric trade. The risk is far out greater than the possible outcome, but I'm seeing like a very slow momentum into it. So if you see 90 to 40 small accounts, you have the option to take it all out. Or if you're trading with only one contract, micro, or full size, take it all out. You also have the option if you're trading with one contract to put your stop and break even and let it go to the second target, which is 90 to 50. It's your choice. Hard stop in all trades. So uh, NASDAQ, let me remind you, we still have a hard stop into the 80. In fact, I think that I want to put it just below this low right here into the 70. I want to give it a little bit more room. Because it's right on the velocity area. So NASDAQ, I'm shifting on the stop just under this low right here. So it says the low is 73. I'm going to put the stop to 70. Remember that I'm taking half of my profit at 90 to 40 and uh, I am going to try to put my stop and break even in oil when the price hits that 40. It may run to 40 to 45 if it should run, 40 to 45. 15 minute is in play right now in NASDAQ. So if the price is going to start trading over 13, this high right here, we are rocking and rolling, guys. Okay, if it shakes out this high, we have room to our 40, maybe even, even into the 50. 
we may have a little bit of velocity as part of that short squeeze. What do you mean number of ticks? Here's the tray. Scroll up and find out. 9145, I just typed it in here. Of course. Um, YM, oh my goodness, YM flying, lion. It's the most difficult pattern though. See how clear NASDAQ is? Hugo, you're hiding under the target, <laughs> target being. <laughs> you're easily recognizable. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Come on, NASDAQ, you can do it. NASDAQ needs to print 13. And it did. Thank you so much for cooperating. Target one is 20. We have a high 16.5. Oil high is 92.35. Five cents to 92.40. Thanks so much, Dochi man. I didn't know what she was referring to. Um, all right, so let's take a quick look. If we should start printing 17, 20 is going to be in the cards. Get your orders ready in case you don't have them ready to take partial profits into 20. Remember, it's a choppy day, small accounts. You can take it all out at 13, 0, 20, or you have the option if you're trading one contract or Full, full size or micro, lift a stop to break even and let it go higher into target two, into 13, 0, 25, into 30, 40. I don't know if we should have velocity here, but remember, this is a short squeeze. It's a counter to the move that we had this morning. All right, it's 920, we have a new time sequence. Let's see if this is gonna be the time when we're gonna start popping up. Okay, here we have target one already hit. Come on, let's go. We are one cent away from target one in oil. Take some profits over there. Like I said, if you were trading a small account, chunk it all out, you're done. I'll see you tomorrow in oil. If you want to still stay in, I'm still going to be trailing it. We can put the stop right now into, uh, not really, not yet into break even. I guess we can't. Yeah, oil stopped to break even. The rest on the second half. All right, no trail stop in NASDAQ yet. We can't put the stop and break even just yet. We've hit the first level of divergence uh, that came into the 920 to 925, as you guys can see it. 
These are our first two targets that were hit. So you should still have one little baby lot left with a stop still at the original at the original area into the original area. Great job, Alonzo. That's how you chunk it in because you cannot afford to lose money. When you're having a small account, your goal is that in the first month, in the first year, to chunk that account up, grow it, grow it, grow it, so you can trade less size. And then you can start trailing. Okay, then you can start trailing. Beautiful, guys. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. NASDAQ, last lot, we're out to the last lot in NASDAQ. Abdul, you're rocking and rolling. Um, last lot in NASDAQ, I'm still having the original stop. I can't trail it, it's too dicey, too choppy. All right, remember oil, is that uh, oil stop, is that break even? Break even, don't let it go below break even. Close the trade at break even. 9205 and out, oil closed. See what I mean? Dicey choppy market, grab your paycheck and run. Still have my stop at break even. In NASDAQ, NASDAQ is the only, only trade. I have my last lot, my quarter size, not significant. Chris, rocking and rolling, Chris. Awesome. Great job. Perfect, Steve. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Guys, we don't mess around with this market. We don't. We don't. And if there's another entry opportunity, then we could go after it again. Right? But the main purpose is to grab our paychecks and run. Second at 25. Jody, target two was 25. We had 20 and 25. And then we have 30. 40 by trailing. It's too crappy of a market. Of course, <laughs> too crappy of a market. All right, I still have my original size. My, my, I still have my original stop, not size. I still have my original stop in NASDAQ. If NASDAQ is going to hold, we may have a second trade in NASDAQ. NASDAQ daily is trading right on the 10 EMA. That is like pretty darn good substantial support if it's going to hold that zone. France is done for the day. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> interesting that oil is trading into our prior entry area right now 9205 i'm just watching it not taking it again so just watching 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 um nasdaq is still trading within this 15 minute formation and we are about four minutes into the prime time trigger time. Remember that target one is always the easiest target to achieve and it comes with velocity. Target two is uh, based on momentum, continuation, and pattern. And there's always, you can always expect a pullback after target one or target two. Always. 
bulls are getting tired. If you're trading to the long side, bulls are getting tired. There's a little two minute rotation in NASDAQ. I'm not going to do anything with that. I'm still with one quarter size with the original trade. With the original trade and the original stop. NASDAQ is doing a sandwich on the five minute. Sandwich on the five minute. Bears are getting squeezed out over 26. If we have a print of 26, we're going to 30 and 40 and maybe 50. Maybe into 50. Yeah, we're going for the next target into 30. So at this point, when I'm into the last slot, my hands are tied. I cannot take any other uh, partial profits. So I'm committed as if I'm trading one contract, okay? So that's how I discipline myself, right? I'm, I'm just not doing anything. Can I ease out? Yes, I can still take some, some, let's say, you know, let's say two contracts here and two contracts there, but I can't. I'm going to keep it as one lot. Okay, as if I'm trading, let's say one contract from this point on. So the next target that we're seeing is going to be 13030. And from that point, let's see if we get it into the 50, right? So 30 to 50 is that room to run into NASDAQ. Roel, paycheck done. Oh my gosh, I am so happy you guys listened because it's always very tricky when I do open houses because, you know, if you have been trading me with me for a while, then, you know, you know exactly what to expect. But sometimes, you know, I'm so glad that you listened in. I, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. People, Craig, why not SMP today? Because it's crappy and it doesn't have room to run. <laughs> Yeah, it's a crappy pattern. I don't trade crappy. <laughs> okay. All right. We have a high 27.75 in NASDAQ. I'm still committed into NASDAQ. Uh, like I said, even if it hits 30, I, I can't take any profits as if I have because I want to let it I, I want to let it go. So at this point, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my stop and break even now. So NASDAQ stop to break even. Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't clip right here into um uh into the 1030 time, 1030 is prime time trigger time. So if it's not gonna clip here, if it's not gonna trigger here, it's not gonna go. So right now, my stop is that break even right now. So my last lot, I'm gonna lose, I'm not gonna lose anything on it. But I'm in very in a very comfortable situation where I can say, hey, you know what? If it works, it works. And if it's going to go to the next target and the next target, and I'm going to be trailing it. But if it doesn't go, for me, it's a risk-free trade because I had a really good run into target one and target two. Remember, these are counter move trades. These are not going with the trend. So they may not continue into further target. That's why I mentioned. Target one, target one. Remember, target one is the easiest target to achieve. And remember it for tomorrow as well, okay? This is not an easy environment. This is garbage. 
what we're trading right now. Or should I say it's garbage? It sounds a little bit better, right? <laughs> okay. Uh, so the low right now is at 13.012. Okay. Just letting you guys know, just quickly reminders. And I know if I'm repeating stuff, it's because um, I know some of you guys may not want to ask it in the room. So the stop is 13.007. Okay. That's the break even. Our entry, our entry is the break even zone. Current price low is at 12.25. And I'm going to show you why I just de I decided on this particular stop, right? Because here's what happened. We had a low, right? We had the lows into the 70s. We had an effort, we went up, we had an effort, we went down. This low never revisited the prior low. So we have already established a little bit of momentum to the upside, being a higher low. And then we snapped higher back again and we had this high into 27.75. Now, when we punched this momentum higher, we grabbed onto the 10 EMA. So that means that we had a little bit more pressure to move to the upside. So in this case, I decided to put my stop at break even because I had a technical reason to do so. I don't put the stop at break even just because I would love to have a stop at break even. Of course, everybody would, okay? But again, I wanna keep it because it's above the 10 EMA. Guys, when the price is trading above the moving average, we, you should be thinking long. When the price is trading below the moving average, then you should be thinking short. And in case you guys are you know, wondering, it's like, oh my gosh, what moving averages are you using? Here's the 30 target, right? This is another target. Do you see me? Like I'm talking to you guys, I'm not doing anything. Because even though I have reached target, my system says you cannot take profits here because you would be killing the trade. So in this case, you need to go by trailing. So trailing is by price action, right? So I'm watching momentum. I'm also watching volume at the same time that I have it on my other screen. Simple volume, not any mumbo jumbo, like prof profile volume. And no, I'm just pure price action trader. The less you watch, the better it is and the more sane you are, right? And if you have a system that is simple enough that you can follow, then your trades are going to be easy. Okay. So right now you can see that we're running higher. We have ultimate target into the 50s. And I said 40s and maybe 50s, right? Maybe 50s, that's optimistic. Now, here's the thing. Can I take the profit into 50? Yes, I can take it at 40. I can take it at 50. But what if it runs into 60? What if it runs into 100? So I'm killing my trade ahead of time, right? So you're going to see me trail live right now as the price action is going higher. All right. So we're at 46 right now. We had a high of 46. So I hope you guys are following along with the analysis. We're going to be trailing based on price action for, from now on. Thanks so much, Doji Man. Thanks so much for keeping an eye on the chat. You guys are still in. You guys need to follow me. And if you guys are still in, I love you even more because you're following directions. One of the hardest things to do in trading is to follow direction. I had to follow direction for about three years <laughs> following my mentor. <laughs> three years. <laughs> it was not easy. Harish, loving you even more. Martin, awesome. Half the size. Remember, we're almost, almost, almost up 30 to 40 points right now. Ah, Abdul, you made me blush. Okay, you can see like a little stall of momentum on the one minute. You can see how I navigated from the 15 minute, have the flexibility to chunk the profits in of the one minute because things can change. And I am going to have a trail stop right away. I'm going to trail. Thirty. 
13030 is our exit. So if the price drops, lift it up, put a hard stop in, raise your stop to 13030. So because our stop was a little lower, right? So all we do is we grab it. If you're trading on thinkorswim and lifting it to 13030, maybe a little bit tighter, but I'm not willing to give anything back. Okay, I'm not willing to give anything back. Current low is 31.5. I'm just saying if we get a print over 47, we're going to 50 and possibly possibly even um 55 to 60 if we hold. Current low 31.25, we're still holding. We're still holding. Twenty SMA on the two minute. Phyllis is mentioning, oh, 50, 50 SMA, fifty SMA. Oh, oh, twenty on the five minute. Sorry, sorry, five minute. Twenty SMA on the five minute. Here it is. Here it is. Get great catch, Phyllis. All right. Okay, everybody, we are out of the trade. We're out of all the trades. Out, out, out. Done. Done. Final trail was at 30. Good job, everybody. Good job, everybody. <clears throat> That's That was a lot of workout for only 23 points, but you get the point. This is what we do in the room. Um, so for example, instead of taking, you know, five trades in and out, in and out, in and out, you know, we're pretty much taking one trade right? And just sticking, uh, having a game plan for that trade. And then we're out, we're out. We can inhale, exhale, and we're done. Okay. All right. This is pretty much it. <laughs> this is pretty much it. Okay. Let's take it back to the five here. We may still have a little bit of momentum higher, but we'll see. So that's how I trail my last lot into the target we have heavy divergency that is coming from rty rty this is kind of like a bear base breakdown looking like a bear base breakdown with resistance and what was high velocity on a macro level into the 23 to 24 level still trading on a little bit of support coil and by the way it's still into support this data line is still support right here okay so um all right let me take some questions. I'm still going to be watching the market. And uh, um, then we're going to talk a little bit about timing of the market, okay? And what timing, what what time is the best time for me to trade the market? Okay, uh, Robert, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I may not be the best, but I'm really focused on what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Durangi, uh, you're using thing or swim. What moving averages I'm using? Phyllis, thank you so much. Okay, so here you have the moving averages that I'm using. This is the pink, uh, the pink line is the 10 exponential moving average. The blue line is the 20 simple moving average. The um green line is the 50 simple moving average. And of course, we have the 200 simple moving average right here. So these are the moving averages that I use. So basically there are three simple moving averages and 10 uh, uh, EMA is the one single exponential moving average. Yes, absolutely. If you guys, uh, I'm recording this and if I post this on YouTube, they will block the video because I don't have the rights to broadcast that song. But please listen to that song. It is amazing. It is our trading room song. So you have to listen to it. You have to listen to it. It's our song right there. So it's pretty awesome. That's the theme song. Exactly, fellas. It's our theme song. And I can't, like I said, I, I can't release it. <laughs> um, because... Uh, it would get blocked. <laughs> the video will get blocked, so you won't be able to see the recording. Oh, well. Oh, well. <laughs> okay.
All right. Ah, uh, thanks, thanks, Richard. So stick around. We have two more days of trading. So you see how I'm trading, how I'm doing the analysis. And I know I do a lot of analysis before I start the day, and that is because I don't do anything while I'm trading. Yeah, I, I don't do anything while I'm trading. I am just focused on price action 100%. It could be like a thunderstorm outside. It could be like an earthquake. You can't take me from uh, from the market. <laughs> okay. Thank you, John. Biden signed the chip bill. Really? Did it happen now? Um, and it's a good thing. Uh, it's a good thing that um, you brought it up because I, I uh, like I like I mentioned. Uh, like I mentioned into the uh, beginning of today's session, I look at the economic releases, but I don't trade news and I really don't care what the numbers are. I literally have no interest what the numbers are uh, because as smart as you can be, you can be the, be the best economist, analyst, whatever it is, uh, it's just a guessing game. Okay, so it's just a guessing game. Uh, Intel, you know what? I love Intel. I love Intel for long term, long term. Um, let me just put it here on the monthly. I know it sucks right now, but I think, uh, yeah, chart sucks, but I keep it, keep an eye on this. Keep an eye on this. I think that once it hits this uh, uh, 200 SMA, it's uh, it's going to try to bottom out a little bit. It's not ready yet, but I do like Intel. Keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. Okay, let's give it, let's uh, take a quick look at the quarterly. Okay, so you can see it's still into a motion. So it may not be this quarter, but let's watch it towards the end of the year. Or it may be a good pickup. Maybe if it's dumped now, because you could see like in uh, 2021 was dumped, 2022 is dumped. These are best candidates as, you know, kind of like window dressing uh, phenomenons going into the beginning of the year. So that would be like January 2023. So keep an eye on it. Don't give up on it. It looks pretty good. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, I love it that you guys are so active and you guys are bringing, you know, ideas. Um, a stand, do I watch the ticks and the VIX? I do. I think, yeah, um, and it's it's important to watch it. For example, today, the VIX are sideways. Let me show you what, uh, let me show you another chart that I'm watching. I shared this in the room as well, and I have this on my other screen. Okay, so you see the, this window right here, you guys can see it. Yes, exactly, Doji Man. <laughs> hey, Anna. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, so um, here I have, uh, here I have the VIX, okay? So yes, this is the panel that I watch. So I don't have it in a watch list, you know, with symbols. You know, I love to have the real estate to watch it. So um, if you have four screens, five screens, six screens, then yes, you can afford to watch that. If not, you can be in the trading room and I'm going to tell you, I'm, I'm keeping uh, taps on the market and telling you exactly what's going on. But yes, I do watch the VIX. I watch the VIX futures. However, Stan, I never trade the VIX futures. Never trade the VIX futures. Like never and ever, ever. Uh, I do trade VXX. VXX. Okay. Uh, so I do trade the VXX, for example, if I have anything, uh, you know, old, kind of like a setup or something. Like I know now that if it's going to trade over 23, the market is going to implode and VIX is going to fly. If you want to do options, you could do VIX. Okay. So you could do the VIX. It's all a matter of preference. What do you want to watch? All right. And this is the VIX. But I like to watch it because we're talking about futures. I like to watch the VX futures right here. Okay, I also have another uh, another chart of VIX uh, on my stock watch. 
Uh, geez, why don't you trade VIX futures? Although they have micros available, it's so wicked and so violent and the tick is super wide. And if you're wrong, you know, position sizing is kind of difficult to do in the VIX. So that's why I just, I just don't do it either, uh, uh, even for a swing. So when I trade the VIX, I always, you know, um, traded, uh, for example, as a hedge. And I only use it as a hedge because I don't like to hedge. I swing trade. I don't like to hedge. The reason why I don't hedge is because I have, I'm using limited risk in my swing trades and active investing trades in my portfolio. And if I need to hedge, it means that I am using a lot of my account size for trading and then I'm seeing that I'm doing something wrong. So basically, when you hedge your portfolio, you know that you have something wrong. When institutions are hedging, they're hedging for a different purpose. When institutions are hedging, uh, for example, they're uh, trading on massive time frames. They're trading yearly charts, quarterly charts, let's say monthly charts is the lowest that they would go. And what they do is when they see an, uh, when they see inflection points in the market, a slowdown in the economy. So whenever they're seeing any kind of gyration uh, gyration points that can produce uh, a certain reaction in the market, like a pullback, they usually get into the futures market. They actually can get into the fix, but they usually get a go, for example, in m and &E p or they go in NASDAQ or they go and hedge into these uh, futures uh, indices. And that is in a proportionate size with their portfolio because as what their purpose is, is to keep their portfolio in balance. So as their portfolio is going down, the hedge is going up and keeping a really nice, well-balanced portfolio with a percentage gain. So it's not letting it drop. Okay, so that's the purpose of the hedge. Now you can do that, but you have to know exactly how much size you're having and you know how to... Uh, uh, make a proportionate decision for your portfolio when you're trading the VIX. Because for example, if you uh, uh, if you have swing trades, for example, you have six swing trades that are going, or let's say two active investing trades that are uh, long, and then you take one position size of the VIX, that's not going to do much because you already have, let's say, six or seven or eight positions to the long side. And what's one position of VIX hedging going to do for you? Nothing. Okay. So you have to know how to work with it with proportions and know how to allocate the funds for it. Okay. <clears throat> uh, w Lamp, no. Oil is dead at this point. It's still in a 15-minute sideways range. <clears throat> there are no entry opportunities. <clears throat> uh, Eileen, what is the number of the EMAs? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, I use the 10 exponential moving average. Let me shift the screen a little bit so you can see it. All right. So I use the 10 exponential moving average. I use the 20 simple moving average. I use the 50 simple moving average and the 200 simple moving average. Yes, the session will be recorded. It is recorded. I hope. Yes, it's recorded. <laughs> okay. The session is recorded. Good news. The session is recorded. Sometimes I um, <laughs> I forget to hit record. And that sucks, especially when you're teaching a course like I do. And, you know, two, two and a half hours in, you realize that you forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> Yes, exactly, exactly. What's so great about the Thinkorswim platform is that you can stay and you can move the stops around. Yes, it's it's uh, very versatile. Uh, plus we provide you, so if you like the layout that I have, for example, um, and by the way, did you see NASDAQ run to 50 and 60, right? Uh, exactly in saying what I was telling you guys about, but like I said, we are trailed out because we don't want to, uh, we don't, we wanted it. We want the pattern to respect our desires, our, uh, our technical levels. 
yes, everybody has access to the recording. The recordings will be sent out to you. In fact, I think I'm going to send out the recordings each and every single day. So uh, those of you guys that missed it, you can uh, listen to the replay. Please listen to the pre-market game plan and then take notes from the pre-market game plan. So when the market opens and uh, when you see how I analyze the trade and how I look at the trade, you will see how the game plan that was done before the market open uh, comes in play into our trades. You don't want to know, Harry. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, it's good. It's good. It has less commish, right? It has less commish, but uh, it's not for me. We will send out an email with the recording tonight. We will send out a recording with the email tonight. Okay, earlier I was mentioning, and I think this is very important to mention, um, that at the beginning of the session, I was mentioning that we look at specific times. We look at 9.30 when the market opens. We look at 9.32 and 9.35. We look at 9.45 and we look at 10 o'clock and we look at 10.30. These are the windows of opportunity for trades. Uh, when we're trading with the trend, we may have trades that are popping up at 9.32 or 9.35. So trades are coming super, super fast. When the market is not sideways, the market is still sideways right now. The reason why we took NASDAQ and then we're going to do the quick recap into the indices and then we're going to wrap it up. Or if you guys have questions, we can still stick around and answer some more questions. Uh, but uh, typically when we're into a dominant trend, uh, we may have entries as soon as 932 to 935. Uh, if we don't have elements that are conducive into the first five minutes of the trades, we may wait for a balancing to happen into 945. So 945 is still very aggressive mode. Trades that are triggered into 932 to 935 or even 945 have a very short duration, very short life, but a really high momentum. So they really deliver because they are trading with the influx from the open. So they, uh, the force of the price carrying through to target is really high. And that's why I specialize. That's what I've been doing for the last 20 years. I've started my career day trading stocks and then, you know, following an advice from an accountant saying that, hey, you're paying too much taxes. You got to, you know, do something else. Like if you want to pay taxes, that's fine. But I was getting like a really upper, upper bracket. So, um, you know, they suggested that, you know, why don't you look in the futures market? So I looked at the futures market. At first, I wasn't very excited about the futures market. I was like, what? I don't have access to my 6,000 stocks. I don't have access to like really long, long, long homework at the beginning of the session and at the end of the session. But all in all, it worked out for the best because when you're day trading stocks, what is the number one thing that you do, guys? <laughs> what, is <the> number... <laughs> what is the number one thing that you do? Guys, I love a doji man. <laughs> <laughs> and Tarche being <laughs> okay. What is the number one thing that you do when you're trading a stock? How many? And uh, type it in here, guys. Type a one in here. Type Gary. Type a one in here. If you are or have been a stock day trader, type a one in here. If you have been a stock day trader before, or if you're still one now, okay. Love you guys. I love stock trading. Love it. I'm literally addicted to stocks. Is there such a thing as addiction? Yes, it is. My name is Anka and I'm addicted to stocks. Yes, I love trading stocks, but there's so much homework to do. Now, <laughs> one, now let me ask you this. What is the number one thing that you do when you're trading stocks? Before you select, before you select, Eric, I have some really good news for you. Okay. What is the number one thing? What is the number one thing that you do? Before you actually, yeah, not, no over trade. Yeah, everybody does that, James, once in a while. Okay. All right. Yes, John, that's absolutely right. That's absolutely right. Yeah, we do that. We pray. Yes, we even do group prayers right here. <laughs> what do we have? When we have like a home run, we're like, let's go, baby. Okay. Look at the futures. I like that, Sunil. I like that. Okay. 
So the one thing that we do, guys, is look at whether the futures, but what I used to do, I used to look at the Qs, the spies, the diamonds, and Russell. Why is that? Because I would look, and pretty much it's the same panel like this, but I will look at the daily charts, and then I will look at hourly charts into those ETFs. The reason for it is that I would get my clues on what will be in play that day by looking at the indices. You get what I'm saying? So for example, if I had relative strength from, uh, uh, from the Qs, <clears throat> then I will look immediately into some really strong sectors that are within the Qs. I will look, for example, in the tech sector, or I will look into the semiconductor sector, and I will see if those were the leading sectors. Now, if I would have, for example, a leading sector, let's say in, uh, in semiconductors, I would scan that sector and I will look for the strongest stock within that sector. And why would that be? Because if I look at the strongest stock within that sector, I would, and if that stock would have relative strength compared to the Qs and compared to the sector ETF in general, then that stock would over deliver and that stock would go faster into target much more faster than I would trade something else. Like, I don't know, I would trade like, um, I don't know. Um, let's say another stock like Costco, right? If I see like the semi semiconductors are moving, I'm not going to go and trade Costco or I'm not going to go and trade uh, Meta, right? Or Twitter. I'm just going to go, I'm looking at SMH. And for example, I'm looking at a semiconductor. Okay. And I would be trading, I don't know, NVIDIA, let's say. So that would be great. Uh, <laughs> hey, lady, Juliana, you need the room in Spanish? We're doing our best to learn Spanish from our resident here that lives off a beautiful coast in Mexico in uh, Claro. Claro que sí. <laughs> so we're doing our best. So that would be like a little wrap up. So the first thing that you do, uh, uh, por supuesto. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> okay. So we're trying our best. We're trying our best. That would be fun. <laughs> I think everybody here by now would would have learned a little Spanish from Hugo in the room. Right? Okay, cool. Okay, so back to where we started with uh, futures. So bottom line is when you trade stocks, you have to look at the Qs, the spice, the diamonds, right? So I was looking at these indices anyways, at the market indices. So I'm like, oh yeah, let's switch and let's look at the futures. And this was like 10 years ago, right? I've been trading, so stocks, day trading for 20 years. But for 10 years, I have been shifting into day trading futures. So I found that, hey, all I have to do is like, what? Just take a look at the M&E S&P NASDAQ and the Dow. What do you mean? I don't have to scan for stocks anymore. That would be like, I don't know, another 45 minutes a day. So you mean I could get up at eight o'clock and actually, you know, come in front of the computer around 830 or, you know, quarter to nine and pretty much that's it. <laughs> so, yes, I was uh, I was um, very, very, very uh, sold uh, onto the uh, futures idea. Okay, very sold on the futures idea. All right. <clears throat> uh, Emini Mom, where do I find more information about joining the room? Is there a link? Um, yeah, you. Um, I, I'm going to give you the link, but you will find more information when I send out the email with today's recording. Um, so if you like the dynamics of the room, like I said, we have, we're literally like a family. We know each other. And this winter, we definitely have to plan something, 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 uh, some somewhere in a really nice hot place. Do you trade ZB? Yes, when it's in play, I trade ZB. I trade everything under the sun. If it moves, I'm trading it. <laughs> okay. If it moves, I'm trading it. Uh, in fact, let me show you uh, because we look at trades in the morning. So, for example, let me just share the screen. 
I accidentally closed it. So just give me a sec. All right, here it is. Okay, so this is pretty much what we're trading, but not limited to this, right? Not limited to this. Yes, sometimes we laugh a lot. <laughs> Ecuador looks really nice to retire. Yes. Okay, so this is the 30 year bond, ZN, 10 year bonds. So smaller accounts can participate in ZN. Uh, bigger accounts can participate in ZB because these are um, a little bit richer, okay, in terms of risk. Uh, I like to swing trade. I, I don't day trade often, uh, ZB and ZN. I go where the opportunity is at. And by the way, there is uh, some big momentum to the downside here that I'm going to take a look at charts. Uh, in a second. Uh, so yes, I look at oil. I look at our Bob. This is gasoline. I look at heating oil. I look at natural gas, which is here, which we called the trade this morning. Uh, we look at the VIX, obviously, uh, all the metals. Uh, these are all the metals that I look at. This is GC, silver, platinum. I have to make an honest uh, uh, disclaimer here and say, uh, I really... I'm not a trader of platinum or palladium or anything exotic like that. Uh, probably I traded like twice in my life and that's pretty much it, two or three times. Um, copper uh, is right here. I look at the dollar and the euro. I look at wheat. I look at corn, soybeans, oats, soybean meal, hogs, live cattle. And that's pretty much it where I'm looking at. But I'm also looking at other things but uh, I have different charts for different different setups and different things. Uh, but like I said, you know, um, we're when the pattern is in play, you guys are going to hear from me. Okay, so we're going to play it. All right, let's do a little bit of a wrap up here, uh, and uh, let's talk about the market once again. We have uh, we have a core support band. So I'm going to take you a little bit far out to the one hour chart to show you what this core band of support is here. Uh, no, I'm going to send you guys to a different chart because you can't really see it. Okay, here it is. All right. I want you guys to have like a really big, big, big chart. Okay. Yeah, I'll show you what the pre-market routine is. And in fact, if you have been here uh, at nine o'clock, you saw exactly what the routine is, but I will repeat that, no problem. All right, so if you're looking at this chart, can anybody tell me what the dominant trend is? Is it up or down? Up or down, up or down. Exactly, so it's up, it's up. So that's why our focus was, uh, our focus was to go long, even for a short squeeze, because we, could have had the momentum, right? Uh, and this is NASDAQ. So uh, what I wanted to show you guys is that we have a huge band of resistance and a huge band of support. Uh, and that is present on our charts. This is the band of support that we have, okay? And we have another band of resistance that's gonna pop up right now, okay? This is the big band of resistance. So basically, when you look at this chart, you're seeing sideways price action. So sideways price action has been for the last eight days. So price is not let to, it's not real, doesn't have that velocity to go up. It doesn't have the velocity to go down. When will that kick in? Well, if we are going to break above, literally above these highs over here, then the price action will continue higher. If we break below the lows, then the price action may start going a little bit lower, may start going a little bit lower. But remember, this is support and confluence. It has a lot of support elements into the 800 area. This is gonna be a massive decision point for price action. And it's not gonna be that easy because if the price breaks down here, okay, if the price breaks down, uh, don't take the first breakdown because that may be a bear trap so uh, wait for the pattern to go back up. If it confirms the rotational bearish pattern that is going to find resistance into this confluence area that we have right here that is from higher time frames, then the price action will start grinding lower, okay? You cannot short this pattern yet. The reason for it is because when you look, for example, on the daily chart, okay? So I'm gonna zoom it in so you guys can really, really see it. 
okay? When you really see it, you guys can see that it's trading right on the 10 exponential moving average, okay? Now, when you think, you know, what is the 10 exponential moving average? Is that really squiggly line going to hold price action? Well, the reality is that there are a lot of algos and a lot of funds that are using the 10 exponential moving average. They're using the 21 simple moving average uh, or the 50 simple moving average. This is the reason why these plays that are in rotational patterns that happen at or around these moving averages are so potent because they have a certain reaction. So for example, right now, is this a short? No. In fact, a lot of funds will be looking at buying opportunities right off the 10 exponential moving average. Now, remember that funds do not use stops. Okay. So I want to clear this out. Funds do not use hard stops, do not use stops at, at all. Okay. So what they do is, for example, they scale in, they scale in. So they scale in, for example, certain lots, certain amount of size into the 10 EMA, the, the, these are true strategies that they use. And for example, if they see that it comes in confluence with some kind of a support level from the prior price action, for example, from this from this peak high, you can see that there's, there's this peak right here, let's say into the uh, 12,880, right? They will leg in some more, right? And they will look for rotational opportunities, right? in order to leg in some more. But anyways, we're not discussing what they're doing. We're discussing what we're doing because we have limited size accounts. We're not trading with billions, okay? So if you're not trading with billions, we need to focus more on a zoom in type of action, okay? So that is um, more onto the, uh, uh, let's say on a micro level than on a macro level. But anyways, when you see the price action that's trading into the 10 EMA, you think, okay, that's massive support, that's confluence, you should have a bounce up reaction. And in fact, if you're looking, for example, on a five minute or even on a two minute, you will see that. And by the way, that level uh, was actually in today's low. So uh, it was around here. We also have a monthly velocity here. Okay, there's something else. There's something we teach in our course. I'm not going to get into it because I'm going to be opening a whole kind of a whole other can of worms. So if you're seeing any kind of reaction off of this area, that is because it's coming from the daily. So that is an algo reaction. Remember that there are algos that are reacting off a of smaller time frames reaction. That um, algos that are reacting off medium time frames. Algos that are reacting off higher time frames and the funds that are carrying. Uh, carrying um, um, and following through with their action plan. All right, so what's in store? So let's talk a little bit of analysis, right? Because we talked about the fact that we have a huge mass of support and we have a huge mass of resistance. The easier trades are going to come, we talked about the downside, but the easier trades are going to come when the price is gonna break above these big resistance points that we have over here. So over the 400 level, we punch over the 400, we have velocity to continue into the 14,000. So yes, we have a lot of room to, a lot of room to run five to 600 points from that 400 to the upside. So what that means that if the price is gonna snap above this point, shorting is not gonna be an option. We're just gonna look for long, long, long. So that means that we're gonna look for pullback and buys, pullback and buys. We're not gonna be shorting the counters, right? Okay, so with that being said, this is NASDAQ. Let's take a look at uh, YM because YM, again, was very interesting and had a very interesting pattern. I'm gonna zoom in. So again, as you guys can see, the trend is higher. We have a series of higher highs and higher lows. Definitely the trend is higher. Okay, so we're gonna be looking for what? We're gonna be looking for an explosion higher. What is the level that we're looking at? Was well, basically gonna be around 950. So this is gonna be the ultimate level. In fact, you could see some notations, bullish above macro. Uh, let me just zoom it in so you guys can see it a little bit closer. We have all sorts of notations. This is what we teach in our courses, how to determine these technical levels based on which you have clarity, sanity, and you literally st trade stress-free. You look for the pattern, you identify the pattern, you're going to take the trade. You don't have a pattern, then you're not going to take the trade, okay? So with that being said, we, you guys can see here, we have moderate bullish above, which means that, yes, this is going to start being a little bit more bullish, and yes, you can tackle the upside, so shorting is not going to be an option. Uh, also, this level right here shows you that you may encounter a little bit of resistance and divergence, but if it pops above it, it will continue with no problemo 
into the second target, into the bullish above macro. And then again, here, it's going to start snapping higher. It's going to have all that velocity to the upside. Don't laugh. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, who goes long? Okay. You can see that tail. Who goes our lies then to the CME? Okay. So anyways, um, bottom line is that the patterns are really messy today, right? So really, really messy. I don't like to trade beyond 1115. And the reason for that is because 1115 closes the door to a trade opportunity that popped up at 1030. So you have 1030 to 1115 for the trade development and pretty much into 1115, uh, your algos are going to start slowing down and you're going to see a slowdown in the momentum from 1115 to 1130. Okay. You may have still opportunities. Obviously the market is still moving, but for my strategies and for my needs and for my paycheck, you know, I'm done for the day. Okay. I'm done for the day. Like I said, I would go out to take a trade, make 30 points or 40 points on a trade, uh, then have six or seven or 10 points in which I get one point here, two points there, three points there, 10 points loss. Okay. So that's, that's what I'm looking at. So bottom line is that YM has the separate, has, has pretty much the same pattern formation, um, uh, as the m and &E SP, let me just take you now to a different screen that because I, I want to show you something else. All right. Uh, something that we talked about this morning. OK, so we talked about this. Uh, we talked this morning about the fact that we're going to be very neutral biased today. Uh, shorts and longs are going to be on the table. They're not going to be easy to follow through, but I favor more neutral towards moderate, moderate bullish. This is what I said. You guys are going to hear the recording of what I said before the market opens, uh, uh, before the market opened, and you guys hear it now again. This is what's so interesting here is uh, that the daily is very sideways and very, very, very choppy. Okay, very choppy. Um, so as soon as we're going to start popping a little bit, and uh, of course, if we start holding above the 10 EMA, then we're going to start getting some traction. By the way, the 15 minute is setting up with bottoming tail. It means that, you know, buyers are stepping up. Remember our neutral bias towards moderate bullish, right? So buy buying off the bottom, take a look at the velocity here. This may be some news or it may not be some news. Um, okay. So that's, uh, that's pretty much it here. Let's see, uh, Peter, come back for the last 90 minutes. Yes. 90, the last, uh, the last couple of hours from two o'clock to four o'clock, you can find some trades. So if you cannot, for example, if you cannot trade the morning, you can come back in the afternoon and you can, um, uh, you can trade the last two hours. I don't for my lifestyle and for myself, I only trade the first two hours and I'm done. All right, what are the red and the orange levels? Um, oh, these ones right here, the dotted lines, you mean? Acentra? It, it, are those the dotted lines? The dotted lines is what you're referring to? Yeah, it's kind of like orangey here, but it's yellow. No, no, not the dotted lines. You mean the purple, purple lines and this red line? right here. Remember, based on your monitors, you may have different colors. So I found that out um, a couple of years ago. You mean these ones right here, the red? Okay, so I'm going to explain what these are. The purple lines are a proprietary, though, no, showed it on the one chart. Let's go back to the one chart. Okay. All right. You let me know what, which one? No, not this one. Not this one. Was it on NASDAQ? Was it on NASDAQ? On NASDAQ. Okay, I'm in NASDAQ right now. Was it on the one hour when I was showing the one hour in NASDAQ? Oh, okay. On the one hour, on the one hour. This is the one hour. Denise, do you think it's the fibs? Accenture, is this it? 
This is the one hour NASDAQ. They were short lines. Um, these ones right here, a center, this, these ones, is this the chart that you're referring to where I have my cursor? Here's my cursor, not fit. Only when, uh, Jim, I'm only doing that when I'm trading stocks. The dotted lines. Anyways, we're going to move on. You got to be more specific, okay? You got to be more specific, okay? All right, so this is pretty much it, what you can expect. Um, this is pretty much it, what you can expect from uh, the trading room. You're going to have live analysis, live trading, precise entries, precise stops, targets, you know, et cetera. So this is how I trade. This is my system for my lifestyle. I only trade the first two hours. Sometimes we're literally done by 10 o'clock or quarter to 10 or sometimes 15 after 10. Uh, and sometimes we're here until 12 o'clock or one o'clock, okay? So it depends when the pattern sets up. Sometimes we may have a trade. I I, I don't think we... Um, and, we had a day where we didn't have a trade lately. Uh, so yeah, we pretty much traded every day. There are days that I like how to, that I like trading, for example, like today, tomorrow, even choppy days. Like, I don't care if I have the patience to wait for a pattern, then I'm going to take the trade. And by the way, velocity came really, uh, really, um, in force here. So typically we would not miss this move if we were in the trading room. Um, today's a lot about talking and explaining. Yes, exactly. It's best to do that. So email me at info at tradeallow.com. Recording will be sent out uh, by tonight. So yeah, I, I appreciate that. Okay. So yeah, I will explain exactly what that is. And yeah. All right. So uh, again, if it was a normal trading day where I didn't have to talk, take questions, um, we would definitely be looking for another trade. And the trade would still be NASDAQ with a five minute rotation with the target into the prior high into the 50 and 60. So right now it's back into target, three bars up, uh, low momentum and low volume, by the way, guys, very low volume today. So not a lot of uh, uh, not a lot of activity in um, in the market today. All right. Uh, so as I was saying, um, if you guys like what you hear, uh, tomorrow is going to be pretty much some of the same uh, action um, and same steps. And uh, we also, uh, there was a question about the routine, um, about, you know, the routine. The routine is super simple. So uh, the room opens at nine o'clock um, and uh, I come on the mic uh, probably around 9, 9.15, 9.20, sometimes 9.25, depends on the market environment. If I see something that is um, really in play, for example, last week we had a trade that I called at 9.28. So make sure you are in the room at nine o'clock and be ready to trade because I'm in front of the computer and I watch, uh, uh, I watch charts. I plot the charts. You see those lines that are bullish above or bearish below or uh, with support or confluence, et cetera. That is the game plan. So that shows you what we're going to be trading that day and shows you where the, what the levels are. Those are plotted daily. They're done manually. There's not a system that is going to do it for you uh, because it's proprietary to trade out loud and it can't be put into an algo to do that. Okay. So uh, I start the day by uh, looking at the uh, earnings reports and uh, in earnings season, I like to look early on to earnings reports. Um, and uh, I like to look at uh, the activity of stocks, the activity of the Q-Spice diamonds in sync with the YMES NASDAQ Russell, obviously. I don't care what other overnight markets are doing, like the Hong Kong or China or Europe. I really don't care because I see it on charts, what they're doing. I'm, I'm seeing how the Asian session, European session has traded NASDAQ, right? 
So I don't care what other markets, I keep it very simple, very, very simple, Sim simplest you can get. And uh, after that, uh, and that is in uh, when we have a really active earning season, then I look and can collect my intel for news. I have, uh, uh, I have different sources where I collect my news from. I have the basic one that you guys saw it in the slide where I get my uh, I get my economic news, but there are some other news. That I use Benzinga Pro, for example, for uh, for news and uh, for some uh, you know trade ideas and for scanners and all that fun stuff. I have to tell you that I'm a software junkie. I also use Bar Chart Pro for a lot of news and articles and uh, you know, to get a really informed decision before I come into the market in front of you guys. So I really do my homework. Um, and after I collect all the news, after I collect everything, I know everything uh, when is, you know, when everything is scheduled to come out or if there was some news or rumors that uh, already came out, I keep those uh, you know, uh, in mind. Uh, so when I trade, I, calculate my targets a little bit differently. Let's say if we're heading into an FOMC day, for example, let's say today we have FOMC at two o'clock, I'm going to be trading differently than I trade it today, for example. And after I collect my uh, economic releases, I collect my news, uh, then I dab into charts, I trace my charts, I get ready for the day, and uh, I plot it out. And if I see some setups that are developing before 9.30, I type them in the trading room. So that's why you have to be earlier in the trading room. So I highly suggest for, for tomorrow, uh, if you, uh, you, know, uh, you know, get into the habit of being here at nine o'clock, the room is gonna open obviously a little bit earlier than that, five to 10 minutes earlier. I try to open it uh, at least 20 minutes prior to nine o'clock now that we're having the open house. Uh, so, um, you guys are going to catch everything that we talk about because we may post something in the trading room. If you log in late, you're going to miss what I post in the trading room because you can't scroll up. This is zoom. So you can't do that in zoom. So, um, that's pretty much, you know, in a nutshell. And then all I have to do, so all my homework is done, uh, basically into 9 15, right. And I'm basically a talking head. <laughs> and I do the pre-market game plan on the mic until 9.30. And then at 9.30, all we have to do is sit back, literally do nothing and watch for a pattern to set up, right? From our pr proprietary trading patterns that we teach in our course. So this is pretty much it. So not, you know, it's not sophisticated. You guys can see that once the trades are lining up, we know exactly where our price entry is. We know exactly where our stop is. We know how to manage it. We have a system where we take profits into target one. We have a system what to react and how to react to target two. We have a system to trail. So nothing is left to chance. Everything is well organized. So everybody can trade stress-free and follow along. Whether you have a small account or a really big account, you trade the same way. The only difference is going to be your R, which is going to be your risk per trade. I highly recommend you use 1% or 2% max if you know, really know what you're doing and if you have some experience trading. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Trading is fairly simple here at Trade Out Loud. Okay. All right, let's see if there are some other questions. Can you explain on the, po the positive uh, and the negative of trading between futures and stocks and mutual funds in terms of capital gains? I'm not an accountant or a CPA, and I'm not allowed to discuss on those specific topics, but you can find a lot of information on your, um, on, on the web uh, with your CPA, or you could Google for more information. Okay. Barry. Oh my gosh. I was thinking about you last night. I'm on honest to God. I was thinking about you last night. I was like, oh my God, Barry told me it starts on the 10th. Isn't it right? <laughs> Isn't it right? Oh my God. <laughs> it starts on the 10th. I can't wait. Yeah. I love Resident Alien. <laughs> it's a it's a fun show. Definitely a fun show. Okay. So we're seeing a little bit of movement right now on charts. Uh, like I said, this is going to be very interesting. In fact, I did mention it earlier. And I said that 
uh, you see that how the price action came into our level. You can see the HVZ zone, which is high velocity zone. Price came in, stopped into the high velocity zone and rotated back up. This is also completing a one hour rotation. The price action uh, is going to go to 13,100. And in fact, I did mention it while we were in the trade. I said, if it snaps over 60, uh, it can go to 80 and 100. Okay. But of course, we're in it to win it and we're here to grab our paycheck and run. That's why I want everybody in the room that has a smaller account to be able to chunk it up, make it a fairly good size account. So a year from now, you can trade, you know, more size, be done. And of course, you know, like if you look through our portfolio, you're definitely going to see that, uh, for example, you know, you're going to get your 30 points, your 20 points, your 50 points in NASDAQ, your 100 points in NASDAQ, depending on the day, but you're not going to see like 1.2 points, 1.3 points, right? So you're going to see really consistent profits into our performance portfolio. Performance portfolio is fully transparent. You're going to see it that you're going to see that it uh, truly reflects uh, all the trades that were posted into the trading room. Uh, and as you can see in the trading room, all the trades are time stamped. So it's not that, oh my gosh, she called the trade. I didn't hear it. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. She didn't do it. Uh, she told me she's out, but she's still in. And, you know, no. So for full transparency, full transparency, everything is in sync uh, with, uh, with the portfolio, everything that we do in here. Okay. Um, Okay, apologies the question I covered, but do you provide a spreadsheet tracking for your trades available uh, for your members to follow? Yes, Sean, I already do that. So I'm going to share it with you. Just, I can share it with you right now. For example, this is something that if you decide to join the trading room, and of course you you have access to the spreadsheet um, that is uh, public into the uh, website. It's really public on the website, okay? And uh, you have that right there. Of course, it's not updated because we're not updating it. We're posting the trades at the end of the month, but members have access to real-time performance portfolio. You ready for this? Boom, here it is. These are our trades for August. All right, these are our trades for August. This is the performance, 2022 performance portfolio, futures trading room. These are all the trades that were called in the trading room. The good, the home runs, the bad, the ugly, whatever it is, it's posted right here. So these are all the trades that we took. It was a fairly active um, first week and a half, not even a half. Uh, I mean, you can see how many trades we took. We took, for example, um, you know, number of trades that we take, August, First, we took one trade. August 2nd, we took one, two, three, four trades we took. Then on the third, we took one, two, three trades. On the fourth, we took two trades. On the fifth, we took two trades. On the eighth, that was yesterday, we had one, uh, two trades that were that we took yesterday. Again, was a very ugly market. I was a little bit concerned. It's like, okay, <laughs> we may not have a good trade. Uh, natural gas trade was called today. You see it right here. Didn't trigger yet. 792 is the trigger. Uh, we have oil and uh, oil and uh, uh, NASDAQ that we call today. These are the realized profits per contract. I don't take one contract. I position size. My position size is fairly large. So I position size for that. Um, so um, if you look at the PL, PL is right at the bottom. If you take all the trades, for example, with a full size contract, that is an example. It's not that you're going to do that. You probably have a different account size. You're going to see that the realized profit is $4,620. Now, the performance portfolio is not only to track the trades, right? And if you go to our website, you're going to see that we have trades that are tracked since 2017 since we uh, created the trading room, right? For full transparency. So people know what to expect. Uh, we have risk management, right? We have a risk management sheet to help you out with position sizing because position sizing is very important. So for example, here you have the markets and here you have, for example, what a tick is, what a point is, and this is for new traders, margin requirements, et cetera. And you can see here. So for example, if I call a trade in the Dow and you have a $200 risk, but for example, you have um, 
uh, let's say your position size is $200, but it has an 80 point, uh, 80 point risk, your stop is 80 points from the trigger, uh, what do you do? You cannot take the trade, but you can take it, take it with micros. So here we have a micros panel, all right, that it's gonna show you. So you can, uh, it can help you position size. If you don't wanna do all the math, we have a calculator for you guys, okay? So if you go to the calculator right here, it's gonna pop up. And for example, you put in here your account size, whatever your account size is, you choose your uh, you choose your risk, whether you're gonna use half percent, one percent, two percent, five percent, or whatever it is. Okay, I truly suggest one percent, but you do whatever you want because it's you. If you want to ignore my recommendations, five percent is a little too steep for you, uh, especially if you're not a really phenomenal trader. And here, for example, uh, you're going to see that if I call a trade. And if it has, let's say, a 12-point stop in ES, right? With this volatility, it's pretty normal, right? You go here and you uh, and you see where the 12-point stop, so you know that you could take it with a contract if you are using $5,000 risk per trade, okay? Let's say you're using, uh, let's say you have a $50,000 account, right? And let's say your risk per trade is going to be, uh, it's going to be $500, which it popped up right here, right? It's 1%, it's $500. You adapt it to $500. And if you have, for example, that 12 uh, point stop, you can see that you cannot take it with a full size contract, but wait, you could take it with a micro. So this is really self-explanatory. You can take it with eight micros, micro lots. And again, you could do this for indices, for micros. You could do this for oil, gold, silver, et cetera, copper, blah, blah, blah. So you get the picture for that. Uh, going back here, you have guidelines. You know, what you can expect. Remember, we talked about position sizing. We also talked about the fact that uh, what is, how are the entries calculated? How are the stops placed? Okay, so if I say, hey, guys, we got to take it above, let's say we got to take NASDAQ above 25. What does that mean? It means like if I say above 25, it needs to clear 25. So you need to see a 26 or 27. Uh, soft stops. What are soft stops? These are the kind of stops that you're not going to use on a day-to-day -day basis. These are used in certain market environments. Uh, we have not used the stops, the soft stops since 2020. So that is literally two years ago, right? So we haven't used that kind of stop in two years. Soft stops are designed for specific markets, but these are exactly what you can expect, right? And when you're taking, uh, when, when I'm suggesting I say, hey, we are going to take this trade with a soft stop. Let's say we take the M&E S&P at 40, 4,200 with a soft stop, with a soft stop, let's say at 4,180. That means that that is not gonna, uh, you're not gonna place a hard stop on your platform, okay? And that particular trade is gonna be with half the size. And basically your hard stop is gonna be, is going to be another half size lower. Okay, so that means that you're still going to have a hard stop, but your hard stop is going to be lower. So basically what it means is that you're going to get it with half the size, half the size, double the stop. That's what it means. Okay, so you don't get dinged out. These are specific strategies that I use and have been using for many, many years. These are strategies that were literally taught to me and I perfected them by using them uh, in different market environments. Um, targets, how to take targets and all that stuff, exits, stop out trades, what uh, news and economic releases and all that fun stuff. You have abbreviations right here that maybe I don't have time to say, hey, this is the PT. Uh, uh, there's a PT developing in, um, 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 I don't know, uh, Russell, right? So you know that there's that is a power trend. We also have a pa uh, we also offer TOL funding. I'm sure uh, many of you guys that are here, maybe you guys do not know. Yes, we do offer funding for our traders. And this is phenomenal because if you guys decide to, uh, let's say, you know what? I don't want to risk my money. I just want to have a funded account. You can get funded with Trade Out Loud at no risk to you. So what that is, is that we give you access to a $50,000 account. We give you money. I'm going to give you money to trade, but you have to prove that you can trade. And then I'm going to give you live money, right? So how it works is we have four tiers. We have a silver account that is $50,000. We have a gold account, which is $100,000. This is the most popular. 
We have a platinum account. You have access to a $200,000 account. And then you have the diamond, which is a $500,000 account. In order to participate in this program, it's strategically calculated that you need to pay a one-time fee. There is no subscription whatsoever. You just pay a fee to have access to the account. And the fee is 1% of the account size. Because I recommend 1% per trade, you're always getting, you know, this is my way of getting you guys ready to think 1%. So you're paying $500 fee if you want to have access to a $50,000 account. You're going to get automatically included in a simulated account. In that account, you need to make 10%. Once you make 10%, you're going to get an automatic email where you're going to say, hey, congratulations, you made it to the live account. Here's my cash. OK, you can trade my cash right now. Now, for those rules, for the live account and for the SIM account, the rules are the same. The daily loss limit is going to be $2,000. The maximum drawdown is going to be $2,500. And profit split is going to be $75,25. Remember, you're not going to pay another admission fee or audition fee or a subscription fee just so you are able to trade my money. No, your money is yours to keep as long as you respect the game plan, okay? So this is how it trades. Uh, there is a proprietary platform that you uh, trade on, okay? So for example, the beauty about this is that you can trade anything that you guys want. So for example, I'm gonna take you right now and say, this is the platform, this is the MT5 platform. Do you guys see it here? Can you guys see it? Can you guys see the screen? Just type a one but it didn't highlight on my screen. So I don't know if I'm sharing it or not. Oh, John, that's a really great point. You don't have a time limit. You could do it in one day. You could do it in 10 days. You could do it in 10 years. It doesn't matter. You don't have a time limit because I don't, I, I'm not a believer in a constraint of the time limit. By the way, beautiful breakout on the one minute in Apple. So that means that NASDAQ is uh, really juicing up. Okay. So the beauty about this is that you can trace stocks. You can trade, uh, you can trade cryptos and you could trade futures as well. <clears throat> Excuse me, futures as well. This is, for example, if you want to trade euro dollar, you could trade the euro dollar. For example, if you want to trade oil, this is oil right here. Okay. If you want to trade Apple, here's Apple. If you want to trade NASDAQ, here's NASDAQ right here. The only disclaimer that I have is that these are CFDs. These are contract for difference. Because other than that, there's somebody that posted in here, you would have to have a $25,000 account in order for you guys to trade Apple, to day trade Apple. And it's more than that. You need to have at least $30,000 in order to day trade stocks. There's no difference between stocks and CFDs. The money is the same. The account is the same. Okay. Is there a difference in the fee commission, et cetera, in the funded accounts? No, the commissions are the same. You're going to get an email with all the commissions. And in fact, you can have all information on our website. And in fact, we did have a big launch. Okay. Um, I think you guys can see the screen. Oops. No, I don't think you can see it right now. Here it is. Okay. So here it is. Um, if you guys scroll to the very bottom, this is our broker that is a really phenomenal broker that enabled us to provide you guys with this program. I wanted to bring you guys access to futures market, to uh, crypto market. Did I tell cryptos? Guys, you can day trade cryptos. You want to trade Bitcoin? Go right ahead. You want to trade Apple? Go right ahead. You want to trade Forex? Go right ahead. You want to trade, um, for example, the four indices? Go right ahead. You want to trade for example, you, you, you can trade almost anything on the planet, okay? Uh, you do not need to pay a fee. No, it's the MT5 platform provided by 8cap. You have the information right here. I'm going to send you guys, if you're interested, I don't know. Do you want me to include this in the email? Do, do you think it's okay if I include this in the email with the recording? Okay. All right, so I'm going to include this information in the email. These are the trading rules right here in case you guys are interested in the trading rules. Okay, I will do that. I don't want to clutter your email. So it's going to be one email with the recording from today. And it's going to have this as well. Yes, for now, the program is, restri is restricted to 8 cap, 
And it's going to come very soon. I don't know how soon, but the broker is in talks with trading view. That's really exciting news. No options. You're already, you already have actions of, you already have access Barry, to tons of markets. No options. It's way too risky. It's way too risky. Okay, so um, you're going to have all the rules and regulations right here. These are funded accounts, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there are some rules. Uh, for example, you cannot hold a position. Uh, oh, and by the way, did I tell you can day trade and swing trade? <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? Yes. Because sometimes you have access to a prop account and you, it's like, oh, man, I can't swing trade. What if I want to take natural gas? What if I want to take oil long? What if I want to take, for example, you know, we talked about Intel or we talked about, um, I don't know, UNH. What if I want to trade UNH long? Okay, there are two options right here. For example, you can opt for a no stop option. So if you go for the basic account, uh, I'm going to provide you guys with all this information because it may be confusing a little bit. So when you offer the program, you're going to have to automatically put in the uh, put in stops. But there's a little fee. I forgot how much it is. I think it's I, I'm not going to say any numbers right here because I'm not really sure. Uh, I have to check it out because this is fairly new. This this is really new. Uh, you're going to have uh, access to. Uh, so you bottom line is that now. You, you know, since like, let's say two weeks ago, I think, or three weeks ago, you would have to close the positions on Friday. So if you had, uh, if you had, let's say a swing trade that you took on Sunday or Monday, you would have to close the position by Friday at 3.45 p.m. Eastern. Now you don't. Okay. So you can keep that on. Okay. Yes. The terms and conditions you find on my uh, website right here. It is tradeallow.com services, funded accounts, you can uh, copy it, look for yourself right here. Um, there's not a private discord for the students. No, it's not, okay? Uh, so uh, funded accounts information, we had the launch. Uh, you can click on this link and you can view the recording. And also this is the MT5 platform orientation. It is your job. The restart fees, you have to start or restart all over again. So if you blow the account, you blow the account, you have to restart. Okay, then you have to restart. Then you pay the audition fee. But remember, John, it can take you like five days to get to that goal of making money or you can blow the account in five days. It's all a matter of position sizing. If you use that one, that one percent, you're going to make it. If you really, you know, just just like press it, press it, press it, press it. Okay. Remember, discipline is key. Yes, you could do that as well. You could do that as well now. I'm going to send you guys all the information. So there is an option where you can enable to have uh, the um, uh, the system show you that uh, you, you can't, you're allowed to hold positions beyond uh, Friday at 345. Okay. All right. All right, how big is the account that you're trading? I'm only going to say this. Uh, my position size is $5,000 per trade, and I trade 1%. Yes, and it's MT5. It's MT5. Okay, so you fill out more information is here. Okay, back to the uh, back to the futures, uh, back to the um, funding. If you guys say, hey, you know what? I'm not going to trade stocks. I'm, I don't want to trade cryptos. You could go through our partner at Top Step. We have many, many traders that are trading with Top Step. Top Step is a little bit rigid, but you're trading the futures, futures. You're not trading CFDs. You're also going to have access in the performance portfolio to the roll dates, right? You can have all the information right here as you go like, oh my gosh, where, where are the roll dates? Uh, roll dates and expiration. You have rules of the trading room. You have layouts. Right. So for those of you that are using finger swim, you just click here and you probably you don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's like, wow, why would I waste three to four months of my life optimizing my layout where I could just get it? Right. That's pretty cool. So this is something that uh, I have ready for you guys. Also, Hugo was really nice in here to create Ninja multi time frame chart settings that you guys see here. This is the screenshot. Do you see like the exact 
the absolute exact layout that I have in the trading room that we played on today. You see it, you have it in Ninja. Okay, so this is compliments of Hugo, right? So um, you have the link in here how you can customize it. You have your holidays in here, you know, when the market is closed, when the market is open, you have our disclaimer, the indicators that we use, and you have the year to date performance. This is 2021 and 2022. You do have 2020, you have um, um, 2017 through 2020 into our performance portfolio that is on the website. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Barry, why the big pop in profits each month year from 2019 to 2020? It's the market. The market became oh, a very volatile since the end of 2018. It was December 26, 2018, when the market became started to become extremely volatile. We were in a void of volatility till then. I'm glad you answered that question. You, I'm glad you asked that question. That's what it is. It's volatility. So you either know how to trade with it or you're going to blow up your account. For us, it worked, right? Because I know how to trade. So 2021, 161 um, January through December. Right now we are uh, 2022 January through July. This is August. We know, uh, in August, we already made lots of cash, right? We're already up like 4,000, I think. Let's Let's check it out. Yeah, over 4,000, close to 5,000, right? Close to 5,000. So you can imagine the portfolio is going to look really juicy for August. And these are, guys, are summer months. These are summer months. Well, everybody's thinking, oh, yeah, I'm not trading in the summer. It sucks. I would rather sit in the sun. You know, it's just like on, when we, we were all locked down with COVID. You know, some people decided to get into the market and learn how to trade. And they're right now they're like up to speed and trading. We have in the trading room a lot of people that started in 2020 and they're rocking the markets right now and they're making money. They quit their jobs and they're trading with us. Okay. And we had a lot of people that were watching Tiger King. Where do you think those people are right now? Probably still into a really dead end job, enjoying the rat race, getting home, eating a pizza, getting fat, sitting on the couch, watching TV. You're at, right? Or we sit here, we trade for two hours or less because sometimes, like I said, we're done at 10 o'clock. We shut the room down. That's what we did last Friday and last Thursday. We had really, really great trades in the morning and we shut the room down. Why? To go to the beach, to enjoy ourselves. Life is more than just trading. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is pretty much it. We have a miscellaneous here that I, uh, you know, introduced. It's a relaxing music and also healing music. You know, we talk a lot about this in the trading room. So I wanted you guys to have uh, the links in here. So in a nutshell, this is pretty much it. What we do uh, in the trading room uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and uh, what we do basically is we trade off this system. Uh, we trade off the Power Income Futures day trading system every single day. This is an institutional grade trading system. It is a stress-free system. Um, and basically, basically, uh, we do have a uh, special offer. And here's a typo. Uh, this is 2022 here. I don't know. See, 21, 22. Here we go. Here it is. Okay. So when you learn this system, you're going to be able to literally know exactly how to trade. If you like my style, if you like the clarity, if you like to trade stress-free, if you want to be in control of your time, if you don't want to sit and be chained in front of a computer all day long and have losses and be frustrated, this course is for you. So we have the course that starts on August 22nd through the 26th, Monday through Friday, from 2 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Eastern. It's a five-day live online. And if you liked what we talked about in the trading room, your mind is literally going to be blown away at the course because we teach you the ins and outs, how to calculate your entries, how to calculate your stops, how to identify patterns, what are the patterns. We teach 10 trading strategies. We could get into that on the last day on Wednesday of what we teach and what we do. We do have two special offers for you guys. We provide you access to 12 mentoring sessions. We're already into the sixth one we completed yesterday. 
We have six more mentoring sessions where I help you. You tell me where you need help and I'm going to help you with specific, specifically into that domain. Okay. And then uh, we also have a special offer for that is literally going to fly away on August 14th. So there's a very limited window for that. You're going to have access till December 31st, 2022 in the trade room. That's four and a half months, four and a half months, literally four and a half months. You have access four and a half months in the trading room for free, 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 free. So if you like what we discussed today, uh, <clears throat> this is where we teach everything, okay? Um, but I also have like a basic price for everybody that is here. And I'm gonna take this down and reshare my screen here. Um, the big surprise is that next week, if you decide that, hey, you know what? I wanna learn more about trading. I'm fairly new to trading or I'm trading stocks and I don't know much about futures and I really love what you're doing because you're trading stress-free and I do. I really have a great time every single day in the market. I laugh a lot. You know, we are high energy here in the trading room. I love it, okay? And that's because we only do it for two hours, okay? So you see me here at nine o'clock and it's almost five to 12 right now, right? And you see me, I'm not taking a break. I'm not taking a break. I'm not taking a bathroom break. I'm not taking a coffee break. No, why? Because this is my life right now. This is my work time. It's my discipline. I need to sit find a trade, trade it, and then I'm off for the rest of the day, okay? So we teach you everything in that course on how to trade like this. So if you're fairly new to futures, we have a th free, let me put this free, and this is the last time we're going to have it free because the next time when this um, challenge is going to be set, it's going to be a five-day, and there's going to be a very small fee for it, but there's going to be a fee. So my time is so precious because I could be doing something else right now, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to teach you next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So we're going to meet again if you guys want to. And I'm going to teach you how to start your trading business and how what you need to get started into futures. And not only that, but we're going to talk specifics. We're going to talk about what you need for a computer. How, what does, uh, how does the market work? Why do you need to focus on specific commodities or specific indices? So we're going to get from, uh, you know, uh, we're going to peel the onion. So we're going to get to the core. What takes to open up your trading business, what you need to have, the capital that you need, how you can get started, the computer that you need, and all that fun stuff. And we're going to get into strategies. Okay, it's going to be a three-day special. You're going to receive the emails towards the end of this week, inviting you to the special Three day event. It's going to be like the open house, but it's going to be more on education. Okay. Uh, Tim, uh, do you get into how to use stops? Of course. That is, we have a chapter that says the, uh, that is the anatomy of the trade that teaches you how to calculate your entry, how to calculate your stop, how to calculate your targets, and how to use the risk and what kind of risk you need to use. So we teach that. It's I think it's really in the core of the course, but we teach that precisely because Tim, you saw me when I was trading oil and when I was trading NASDAQ today, I had a precise entry. I didn't wing it. I had a precise stop and same in oil and in NASDAQ. I don't wing. I don't wing it. To me, trading is not winging. And I don't say, you know what? I think that that's a good area because that's the common word. Every trader that you go to, they go like, ah, oh, this is a good area. I'm going to uh, dab a little bit here. Are you kidding me? You either know or you don't know. That is total BS. You either know what your entry is and know where your stop is and know your game plan, know where your targets are and know how to trail, or you don't. You don't just wing in and say, NASDAQ is not support. I'm thinking I'm going to buy some here. Are you kidding me? Trading is not like that. Algos don't think. They act. So I'm going to teach you guys how to act. And then we teach this in our course. If you like it, you're going to see, uh, you're going to love it. Like everybody that, like the reviews are outrageous. Like if I tell someone that everybody that took the course provided a five-star review, nobody believes it <laughs> because it's that good. 
So you have to understand that the course, what I'm providing you in a course is literally a shortcut. It's 20 plus years, 20 plus years condensated into five days. So yes, you can learn by trial and error and it's going to take you five years, seven years, 20 years. You're going to get bored or you're going to blow up your account by the time you learn how to trade. You're going to be too old and too crappy that you won't want to trade anymore. I'm providing you that window of opportunity with a shortcut. This is your non-traditional education. This is something that you don't learn in high school, in college, at any university, on any PhD, on any kind of master's degree. This is something that I specialized in, that I had a passion about. I also come from the domain because I have been working in the finance, the financial world and I loved it. You know why? Because I love money and I'm not afraid to say it. I love money and you should love money too because when you love money, money loves you back, right? And when you love money, you're not gonna blow up your account. When you love money, when you get into a trade, you go into the trade to make money. You're not getting into a trade to wing it and say, oh, well, it's only 200 bucks or it's only 500 bucks or it's only 5,000 bucks, depending on your, um, you know, account. Okay. All right. Daniel, how much capital is needed to start your trading after buying the course? You can start as little as $5,000. You can start as little as $5,000. And you guys saw that, Daniel, I think you heard me in the trading room saying that small accounts take profit here. <laughs> take your paycheck run. I'll see you guys tomorrow. So that's what I say, right? Because you need to chunk it out. You need to chunk it out. But we're going to talk about different account sizes and the different, um, account levels next week in detail. Uh, Durenji, you know how to trade, uh, but I want to follow you. Do you have any special if I sign it for the yearly? Yes, if you sign up for the yearly, it's right on the website, you get two months free. So you only pay for, uh, you only pay for 10 months and you have access to 12 months. Um, any other questions? Uh, Laura, yes, plus you can take the course forever. One thing with the course, guys, that, you know, quick disclaimer right here. <clears throat> so once you take the course, the course is super heavy, okay? Super heavy. It's going to make your head spin because I wanted to include there my 20-year experience, literally. So when you first attend the course, remember, you're going to absorb probably, I don't know, let's say 40 to 50% of the information. But within the next two to three weeks, you're going to get, forget about 20% because you're not going to apply it, right? So what I highly suggest, come and take the retakes. The retakes are always free. We don't charge for retakes and you have lifetime access. And that is because trading is about repetition. It's about sticking to the system. Okay. So, uh, yeah. This is pretty much it, guys. Uh, I think this is it for the day. We went a little bit 30 minutes uh, after. I have to get ready for my physical therapy. I have a torn meniscus and I am ready. This is my week six after my accident. <laughs> hey, Den, you're pumped. and want to take the course, but um, yes, absolutely. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. Yes. We're here for you whenever you're ready. Take your time. There's no time pressure. We're always here. Yeah. Uh, do we use proprietary indicators? The answer is no, Charles. This is amazing. It, it's indicator free. You're already liberated. <laughs> Retakes are awesome. Thanks, Doji Man. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Denise. All right, guys. This is it for today. I will see you guys tomorrow. Same place, same time. Enjoy the rest of your day, uh, the rest of your day, mice down and let the party start. <laughs> okay. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see what tomorrow brings. Thanks so much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the day. This is a wrap. Bye-bye.